Spotters should be utilized when navigating with materials, working in tight or congested areas to assist in monitoring the operator's blind spots, working around overhead utilities or structures, excavating around buried facilities, and on sites congested with heavy traffic and or ground personnel. While every construction site will present different scenarios, it's important to recognize the site-specific hazards and identify when the use of a spotter will help eliminate or control those hazards. Before any work can begin, a hazard assessment must be conducted. This process must include all personnel involved in the task at hand and is required to be re-evaluated and updated as the task or day progresses. While every task and site will pose their own hazards, some general hazards to consider as it pertains to the spotter's role can be applicable in all operations. Consider ground conditions. Is it smooth and dry or is it slippery and uneven? Is there a slip or trip potential for the spotter? Do the ground conditions present a potential rollover concern for equipment? What about hazards above? Are there overhead power lines, structures, or work areas present where the spotter or equipment will be working? Are there buried utilities in the area, and have these been identified and marked? If spotting equipment during excavation work, all utilities must be located and positively identified. Are adequate ground disturbance clearances being maintained, and do you know what the clearances for mechanical excavation are? Is the work area congested, or does it present restricted movement for the equipment? With pivoting equipment, such as excavators, how much room does the equipment have to operate considering their swing radius? Are other workers in the area of the mobile equipment? What are the blind spots of the particular equipment? And what are the safe positions for the spotter to be to both direct the operator and stay clear of blind spots or pinch points? Is the spotter positioning safe in the event of operator error, mechanical failure, or equipment upset? Does everyone involved fully understand the communication protocols or signals to be used and the method of communication established? Are two-way radios to be used in combination with visual signals, or are the spotter and operator relying solely upon visual communication and signals? These are some of the most common and critical questions to consider when completing your hazard assessment. You will never control a hazard that you do not identify. It's possible that one of the most critical controls to consider after assessing the hazards begins with spotter positioning. By ensuring the spotter is clear of blind spots, in constant visual contact with the operator, and on the best ground conditions available, the hazards for personal harm to the spotter can be greatly reduced. This position must always provide a safe emergency route for the spotter in the event of equipment upset, mechanical failure, or operator error. It's also critical to ensure the spotter is clearly visible to the operator both in their line of sight and clearly identified with the use of Class II high visibility vest and possibly arm gauntlets. General positioning should always adhere to the following practices. Never stand directly in front of or directly behind any equipment. Always avoid pinch or crush points. When hoisting materials or equipment, never walk or stand underneath a load under any circumstance. Stay clear of equipment blind spots. If you can't see the operator, they can't see you. Ensure footing is stable and don't stand in positions or on ground that possess slipping hazards or presents potential to collapse, such as at the edge of an excavation. When possible, position yourself in an area that minimizes movement. This reduces the likelihood of slips and trips and also helps the operator know where you are at all times. Prior to beginning work and as part of the hazard assessment, the spotter and operator should conduct a full walk-around of the equipment. This walk-around provides an opportune time to communicate blind spots or machine-specific requirements. This communication gives the spotter more information to safely guide the operator. Whenever equipment must travel along a route, always plan ahead by inspecting the desired path and minimize the distance of travel, especially when the equipment is in reverse. While two-way radios provide an effective method of communication, they may not always be available, which emphasizes the fact that the spotter and operator must always maintain visual contact with one another. This stands true even when two-way radios are being used. All signals to be used must be clearly understood by the operator, spotter, and the personnel on the construction site. Spotters should always be utilized when completing simple lifts or the moving of materials. Many lifts and the hoisting of materials may require the use of trained and competent riggers as hoisting materials and equipment is a high-risk task and must be treated with great care and adequate hazard control. When moving material, ensure the spotter and operator plan to inspect the route prior to movement. 
Remember to watch for overhead power lines and other utilities, ensuring that the appropriate clearances are maintained. If power lines are present, these should be marked with goal posts, clearly identifying the required clearances. On congested, restricted, or highly active work sites, traffic control personnel or devices may be required prior to moving material and equipment. As a spotter, you will need to approach equipment. However, you need to execute this in a particular manner. Before entering the swing radius or safe distance areas, establish eye contact with the operator and communicate your intent to approach using hand signals or with two-way radio. Wait until the operator acknowledges your communication, places the blade, buckets, forks, etc. on the ground and places engine in neutral or turns off the equipment. Only after this has been completed and the operator signals you to approach may you do so. Working around powered mobile equipment is a common and essential process in the construction industry. While the hazards are an ever-present reality when working around this equipment, the risks can be controlled and often eliminated, making this element of construction safe and productive.